9 o'clock. We'll call the meeting to order. Uh, do we have confirmation? We are legally posted under Chapter 19. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, approval of the minutes from April 6th. We'll have a motion. So, second. Discussion? Changes? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. If we say aye, opposed, hearing none, motion carried. Can I, can I you may vote yes, sir. <laughs> public comment on agenda items. Is there anyone from the public that wishes to address the agenda today? Am I public? No, you, well, you can speak uh, as a citizen. Very quickly, Doug and I took a trip over to the East Coast the other, uh, well, a, a, a week and a half ago. And two weeks ago today, in fact, and one of the things that I saw that I thought was really interesting that we might consider doing is the Chesapeake Bay watershed. And they actually had a big sign in Pennsylvania saying that we were entering the Chesapeake Bay watershed. It would be nice to see signs like that around to show us how big Lake yeah. Lumbago is. We have actually, during the pri was priority watershed years, we had three of them in this county. In each one of those watersheds, we had a sign saying we were entering this watershed as an awareness. On 21, there's still a tiny little sign out there from these years. So yeah, depends on how you want to break it down by the watershed, right? So. But it's very educational. It's, it's, it, it's really educational because suddenly you discover it's not just like the Nevada or Oregon. We have in the past, I don't remember. Thank you for your comments. Anything else? I hope you enjoyed your trip, by the way. Uh, any other comments from the public? Hearing now, we'll close that portion. Announcements. Okay, good morning, everyone. Uh, just wanted to let you know that we had our 2023 tree day on April 11th, and it was a success. There were over 22,000 trees that were distributed, and we sold a bunch of materials through our department. We have liquid gel, fertilizer, tablets, tree tubes, tree spades, and then we do have tree planters as well that were rented out and still being rented out because it's tree planters. Um, I just want to explain the 2024 budget process briefly. It's going to be a little bit different approach for the county and this department. Um, they're going with what's called a priority based budgeting process. So I'm working on that and identifying the different programs in the department and then putting values and costs on all of that. So I'm in the early stages of that. Um, this will be brought to the committee. It's looking like we fall to review that budget once I do that. Completed for the draft budget for the department. My, my understanding is that's kind of a two year process. That's my understanding, but it seems like we're jumping into it pretty quick right now. Like, okay. this should be the first step in it. So, yeah. So, it's a big change from baseline budgeting like we've done in the past. It's a very painful process that may be wonderful for years. That is a good way to summarize it. I think the beginning stage of this. A lot of work, but once we get everything entered in, it'll hopefully come years to down, down the road. So, um, good thing is, our department, uh, we have a lot of state mandated things that we have to do when we have these different programs that show value to the So, um, I think it's going to help our cause when we prioritize everything. We're still having an occasion to offer this. Oh, that director. Um, the review with committee is on hold. Um, the chair, I don't know when they're having to be that event at that point. Okay. Yeah, all right. Um, I wanted to update all of you on the Climate Smart Commodity Grant. That's the, the grant that multiple counties were getting about $780,000 for the department that we're going to staff and then funding for soil health initiatives. I'm going to be a three-year position, and uh, it's USDA's 
kind of dragging their feet on coming up with the final grant negotiations. It's taken a lot more time. Um, it's already started the clock's ticking, but it's looking like it's going to be mid summer before we get all the final details on that grant proposal. Um, so once we get those details, and I'll have to make a decision if we want to start implementation of that grant this year or if we just wait until 2024, which might be easier with the budget process instead of trying to bring somebody on quickly right around fall time. It's going to be cover crop time that we'll be trying to sign up producers. And I almost feel like it's better just to wait until 2024 to get started. Um, so I'm working on that budget. That will have to be a whole separate part of the budget as a project. Um, there's a lot of moving parts with that. So I will keep you all posted once we get more detail from USDA. Um, Fox will go with me on that for that part. So I wanted to let you all know that um, there was a Monsanto class action settlement that was settled. That's from PCB pollution in the rivers. Um, the chemicals that were developed by Monsanto, there was a lawsuit in California. Um, there was about a little over $27,000 that the county got, and the uh, money went to our department. So that was put in our coffers, and we can use those funds for anything that reduces pollutants in the county. There's no reporting, you just have to do something that's going to reduce pollution in the county. So, so that's additional funds that we just got. Um, so that's in the budget. I want to let you all know, and I think some of you are aware of it, that Greg Dury, the director of the Winnebago Waterways Program, she is resigning from Fox Wolf, um, effective on May 12th. Um, she was instrumental in the development of the Winnebago Waterways Program, so those are going to be big shoes to fill, and she is going to be, yes, we work very closely <coughs> with in that program. Um, so hopefully Fox Wolf can take somebody on board that can fill their shoes and be um, Chad. <clears throat> yes. Oh, who did you say was resigning? I couldn't understand. Corinne Dury from Fox. Oh, Corinne is resigning? Oh. Yep. Yeah. yeah. So we're intertwined with that um, with Fox Wolf and Corinne and a number of different programs and grants. So uh, we'll see. We'll see where that goes and we'll adjust to moving ahead. And that is all I had for announcements. So thank you, Chad. Uh, any questions for Jack? Yes, please. Uh, with the county pollution, is that something where break walls could be put up? Yeah, the, you're talking the funds from Monsanto? Yes. Yes. Yeah, break walls, anything that's going to reduce pollutants, it's pretty wide open with those walls. That would be super. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, it was unexpected, so it's great for the department and no reporting, no strings attached. It's just the and, it's, and it's one time use of the money. One time. Yeah. So we get it. It's in right now sitting there. We spend it. It's gone. Yeah. Thank you. And totally off the wall question. I don't know if you ask it. The large bog that uh, kind of wrecked Hamlock on the Rat River there. Is that anything that we would? Would or could be involved? I believe the bog is back where it belongs or where it should have stayed in the first place. Is there there's something with rock or whatever that would help secure that better in the future? Or? You know, it, it happens a lot that it's substantially larger than we normally see yep. with the floating yep. bogs. Uh, there really isn't anything our department can do other than educate. Um, probably because of high water levels. So that's a big part of educating the water levels on the system. You get those spring vents and the water levels high just go off right free, as you know, and cause problems like that. But there, there isn't a whole lot we can do other than I suggested maybe some contractors that can go in and remove it and then they get off. Beyond that, not a good time. Well, at this point, if some contractors should decide a couple of pipelines there. I, I mean, I see them coming under the Winnie County Bridge on a regular basis. Never saw one quite that substantial. It was. Yes. And then you just hate to see it go away. Mm -hmm. What position did the DNR take? Are they helping? I did That's not. primarily their responsibility. I did not hear. I don't know if DNR is in that 
that's blocking navigation. It's a navigational issue, right? So I don't know. Yeah, the string. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe they took the took the stance that it wasn't the proper problem and it naturally occurred. So I think that typically what they do on rivers and streams yeah. is there's boundaries yeah. of that. That's mother nature. That are problems. Clients. Just curious. Sorry to get us off track. Any other questions of chat? Now we'll move on. Uh, committee chair report. Uh, obviously, today we start a process uh, that will be somewhat historical, I think, in nature. Uh, to develop a plan for the expenditures of the additional funding we have. And we're going to do that, of course, through a document. Which will be a policy document, which will be I, at this point reviewed by the county board and approved. So we'll begin that process today. I expect it to last several months. Our target is September, I believe. Maybe yes. even sooner. The sooner would be nice. Yeah. Um, to shoot for the end of summer. I'll bring it all through. I'll go ahead with all of them put together in a this will be a document. Can I call that a book? Would that be a good term? Yeah, policy book. Yeah. So we begin important uh, projects today. Uh, any questions of myself? Hearing now, we'll move on to the business items, and that is the update on the development of a producer led watershed group. That is this document. Yeah, that, okay. Yeah, so, so Emily from our office, she is our watershed specialist. Um, she was hired last year. That was a new position for soil health initiatives, and she's going to give you all an update on Creek Lake. Yes. Let's get the presentation up here. Okay, so to give a little bit of background where this group kind of got started, um, with the Great Lakes Sediment and Nutrient Reduction Program grant, I had to do outreach in the Rat River watershed area. Um, through that, I met with Jim Lidke, who had a lot of motivation to get one of these groups started up here in Winnebago County. He's traveled through the state and gone to many others meetings um, and seen how beneficial they have been to the farmers. Um, so I kind of got to talking with him. He um, would like us to be the collaborator for the group that he has formed um, as one of the requirements that they need. Um, and I'll kind of get into what that all entails in this presentation. So um, a producer led watershed group is a group made up of farmers for farmers. Uh, these groups are a way for farmers to expand conservation on their farm and try innovative ideas um, while engaging with their neighbors and documenting the progress um, as they work towards a common goal together. So these groups are very oriented around um, activities. So they do have meetings um, and they also do a lot of odd farm demonstrations. So that includes field days going out to farmers um, farms and seeing the new equipment that they have, the new conservation practice that they're doing, um, trial strips in their fields, just learning from one another and asking questions, bouncing off ideas with each other um, while just being out on the farm. Um, these also have a lot to do with farmer to consumer outreach, trying to break that gap between the farmer and the urban local areas um, and communities. So talking with businesses, providing events and education to um, the urban areas that don't have a whole lot of knowledge on farming. Um, and then farmer to farmer outreach. These farmers have to recruit other farmers to join their groups. So they have to get out there and talk to their neighbors, see if their neighbors are interested in becoming a part of the group or um, what conservation practices they are already doing and just another way of learning and bringing farmers together. And then lastly, they have large cost share program or a big part of these groups are the cost sharing programs trying to create incentive money um, so that we can help farmers or motivate their neighbors to 
try these conservation practices while also having a little bit of incentive money in case these practices don't go as originally planned or have the right outcomes for them. So in order to have cost sharing in these groups, they do have to have grants. Um, these grants provide the money for the cost sharing programs to try new and innovative ideas. Um, there are a lot of grants out there right now for these groups, especially in the promoting of soil health, since that's such a big buzzword right now. And these practices are really becoming um, big for the farming community. So some grants that are eligible for these groups come from environmental defense funds, National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, um, Professional Dairy Producers Foundation, Wisconsin Farm Bureau Federation. Um, those are just some of the grants that they, or some of the, um, people that give out grants for these groups. However, there is one big common grant, which is the Producer-Led Watershed Protection Grant. This grant comes from the Department of Agriculture, Trade and Consumer Protection. Um, it funds to, its funds are to focus on non-point source pollution with the goal of increasing on the ground practices and farmer participation in soil health efforts. Um, here is the summary fund from when their group got started in 2016. They had 15 groups in the state of Wisconsin and they were awarding $242,000. Um, and then now here in 2023, as you can see, the group has gotten very large and growing to 45 groups um, that are wanting fundi funding. Obviously there is other groups in the state of Wisconsin that don't go for this funding or for this grant in particular, but now they're up to giving out a million dollars each year. Um, and as you can see from just 2020 to 2023, this group has, or these groups have grown tremendously over the last few years, just seeing very good benefits for the farmers. There are three main requirements of these, of applying for this grant. Um, you have to have at least five farmers within the same watershed that are dedicated to your group. Um, you have to have at least one collaborator and a collaborator is an organization that has an understanding of issues being faced in the watershed region as well as how to support those issues which is kind of why um, the most common collaborator for these groups is the land and water because that's what our job already is um, and then with these groups there is a max award of forty thousand dollars per group however you do need to provide a one-to-one -one match 50% of that match can be in kind. So that includes the staff time and farmer's time for up to $25 an hour, um, donated facility rentals, materials and equipment, and then the farmer's cost for implementing practices. So then if you did a 50% in kind, you also have to have 50% cash match. Um, and that cash could come from other grants or cash donations, um, your equipment rentals, um, travel costs, farmer acreage crop match, and um, the cost to purchase the materials for the group and for the events that you're hosting throughout the year. So as a collaborator um, in this group role, um, the county would provide conservation technical assistance, conservation planning, nutrient management planning, um, while providing local and land use information such as aerial view and um, maps um, and then connection to incentive programs and administrative and organizational assistance. As you can see, I do have the top four bolded because those are already um, things that we give out as our county department for everyone in the county. So we are just adding, the main one is that administrative and organizational assistance role that we would have to make up. These groups are highly beneficial as the growth you've seen over the last few years to so the benefits of the farmers. Um, they have control over these groups. They get to, to decide everything that the group gets to do from the field days to when these meetings are hosted, um, the format of the meetings, how formal they are to be, um, and just if they want to work with businesses in the area to put on other events, they get to control how much they take on as a group. So um, another benefit would be the funds that they get through the grants to learn and to try new practices. Um, that incentive money as a backup to just get them more comfortable with trying these new um, conservation practices. And then they get to work with and encourage neighbors. So it does help when one neighbor starts to do something, it does kind of go throughout the neighborhood and 
that gets to talking and other neighbors sometimes join in in the conservation practices. Um, this allows community recognition, like I had mentioned before, just getting that community and urban area involved um, and growing knowledge on the farming community and side of things. Um, and then they just do get a social hour at each meeting and a very positive farm image. Not only are the groups beneficial to the farmers, but they're also super beneficial um, to the collaborator as well. For me and my position, this would help me to have very good learning experiences. Um, obviously, there's a lot of selling of soft practice conservation for me and my position. And being able to see these farmers actually do the practices on their land and learning what works and what doesn't would tremendously help me in selling um, these practices to other farmers throughout the county. It also helps our department to get um, its name out there. Some farmers I talk to don't even know about many of the programs that we do offer as a department. So it just helps us to get a positive name out there for the department and not just, oh, you guys are all regulatory. You just wanna tell me what to do. Instead, we are here to help and to get conservation on the land for the benefit of them and us. Um, it forms trusted relationships and those trusted relationships in the end do lead to more conservation on the land because it will really help to just build up the trust and for them to obviously just put that conservation on the land by knowing more about it. So the group that we have here um, in Winnebago County, right now they're going by the Muddy Bottom Farmers, that is subject to change the title, um, but it is in the Lake Poygan Hawk 10. So that does include five Hawk 12 watersheds, which would be the town of Dale, Rat River watershed, Medina Junction, Rat River, um, Pumpkin Seed, Arrowhead, Lake Poygan, and then Alder Creek watershed. Um, the red star does represent the Rat River, which we are working in right now um, because it is the top priority watershed for um, the loading rate. And another pretty good thing about this Huck 10 is that Arrowhead River and Pumpkin Seed are our other two top loading watersheds. So it's just, it should open up doors to get more farmers to practice that, those conservation practices in our most high highest loading watersheds. <coughs> all right, so the group that we have right now is made up of 12 members. They are all quite motivated about this. Um, and they are just excited to get it up and running. Um, Jim Lidkey, like I had mentioned before, is the one who got this all started. And a lot of the other farmers are already doing conservation practices on their farm. Um, one of the main requirements for the DADCAP grant was to have those five core members. Um, we do have six that volunteered to be the core members of this group, um, which would be Jim Lidkey, Hunter Strabig, um, Steve Lidkey, Dan Rickman, Clint and Ted Eckstein, which Dan, Clint and Ted are all um, part of our other grants that we have right now going on in the Rat River watershed. Um, and then the goals that they have come up to put together for this grant is to improve water quality and soil structure, reduce sediment and phosphorus loading, as well as provide outreach and education to farmers and the public. Well, they're very beneficial and positive goals. Um, and our progress up to date, we have had two meetings held so far and the next one is coming up in July. Um, bylaws are being created just to have a formal outline of the office positions for the guys and um, what all their duties are in those positions. Um, and then we do have, we are collaborating with them to put together a memorandum of understanding, which is another requirement of the grant. Um, this is a formal layout of our roles versus the farmers roles in these groups, just to make sure that we're not overloading ourselves on the work that needs to be done with these groups. Um, and then lastly, they are coming up with a logo to brand and creating communication channels um, just so that they can get that advertisement out there to the public and to grow more. And then their upcoming plans, they do plan on applying for that DADCAP producer led grant. Um, they do have to determine if they want to become a 501c3 nonprofit just to make it easier for um, the funding sources from other grants in the future. And then they are planning on having a field day in the fall.
that is what I have for you guys today. If you guys have any questions. Um, yep, it would be for the Huck 10 area watershed that I had in the one slide. Um, however, right now they are going through, what would you call that? The government is trying to get um, a law passed to have joining watersheds right. also yeah. join in. Beyond the Huck 12. Yeah, beyond the Huck 12. Yeah. So like if there is another Huck that is adjacent to this watershed that they also may be able to become part of that group and receive the cost sharing. Or, 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 or nope, this actually does go into um, Outagamee, Wapaka, and Washera a little bit in the up what here. Yeah. Well, they're their own entity to create themselves as a nonprofit. The role for us is still being discussed if we be the fiscal agent. Um, we're just waiting to get more details on that. But they they kind of lead it themselves as producer led and then we be in the background potentially helping with the grant funds, distributing the funds, possibly. That's, yes, that if you were the fit if we are the financial or that needs to be yes. determined yet. So but it's really led by the farmers. Well, I hear that, but that's a total different sort of different direction than what the county has been in for these programs. Oh, and it's been, and would it be competition for a similar grant that you would be going after? Or these are small grants, it's a max of 40,000. So they can try innovative things, but I really see this group dovetailing our programs too. So if they will they have practices they want to do that are eligible. They can work with us as well. This is just a little bit of seed money to get the farmers talking to try some of this. It's not a big funding source, it's a smaller funding source that would allow us, but it's getting the farmers talking so it's not government telling them what to do. They kind of try to get their own. It's a little bit of money to do it, and then if they want to go further with it, so the government, the government, they still have to be under somebody's umbrella. They do the dad cap grant. There's parameters of that that they would have to. And is that under the waters of the United States or only the Department of the Colonies? That's, that's a state grant. Yeah, that's a state grant. So some counties aren't even involved. A lot of times, like Emily said, they are for land conservation, but some of them are just getting these up and running on their own. So we need to have a collaborator, but that could be a profit, it could be somebody else. That could be as well. So, are they applying for grants for conservation projects on that own? That could be a part of it. Innovative practices. And it might be just to get the group up and running. There's mm -hmm. some costs involved there. Field days cost money. Yeah, so, a lot of the grant, like a lot of the farmers that we have right now, yes, they would be okay with the incentive money to these practices, but obviously they could go to the county and get our incentive money for at a higher rate. Um, but a lot of the dad cap money goes towards getting those field days, like just providing snacks or providing maybe a water test kit to test your waters in the through, throughout the watershed to see how high of a loading rate so you if have. So get some a grant money from somebody, they can just sort of go on their own, they want to follow the county slash state. Yeah, that's my question. Well, there's there's rules they have to follow. There's agriculture performance standards. It's law. So who's going to be the regulator? Well, we are the regulator for that. But this, to me, is a, it's another Entity that can help our cloth. It's the word out there, it gets farmers talking. I mean, our department's only a staff of eight. We can only educate farmers so much. And this is just, it just dovetails the work that we're doing to go and helping our cloth. And like Emily said, we're working in the rabbit or the watershed, and that's how this came up. Right. was kind of part of that discussion, and it, it's just blossoming the time and things. It's so helpful. It only is going to help our cloth and program. Because if they have field days, Farmers are going to come with you promote our program that was field day. Oh, for sure, is what they're handing out. Um, they have handed that out. Um, the only reason I ask is you said there's multiple counties, and we are the only county I see this one. I'm sure. This is just for our county for promoting it. it it's statewide. I just keep in unity of what the distance. I think maybe put something together of what it actually. Who's involved and where it's going? It almost seems like some competition. I think it's the truth. I think I think it's 
it's a partnership that can really help us sell more package. Again, we can only get so much done. And there's innovative things that, you know, it's trial and error with a lot of these little health practices and these farmers try new things to do this and learn from each other. Sometimes they're more receptive to talking to each other than listening to the other and tell them what to do. And then it spreads to the neighborhood and we're learning things. So some of these new initiatives, I, I, I just think would really help help our class. You know? yeah. I do see uh, interesting points there. You said there's three counties involved? This Huck 10 does three go counties. into three so other if counties. So they identify a conservation project in one of Bigel County, and they identify a project in Outagamie County, same project, perhaps they run together. In this county, it could be funded at 90%. In Outagamie County, it's going to be funded at perhaps 70%. Yeah, we're talking about one of the eligible tracks. So I assume the focus of the group is to uh, not only education, but to provide uh, conservation practices and identify those that need to be done within that watershed. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, they would apply to this department for engineering and funding of that practice. What are you going to do as? Bruce indicated when you're running through different counties with different uh, support structures, i.e. 70% versus 90, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I see the conflict you raised. Well, I, mean, I think it's a wonderful idea. Yeah. Farmer, yeah. Innovation is always going to happen. Yeah. Yes. Farmers are the innovators. And then mm -hmm. I don't want to give them too much authority. And that's where I ask folks to go to the structure. Who, who are the following kind of people? Yeah. So who all plans work for they had a, a thought with the plan that come to the plan. It's just the grant proposal, what they're going to do with an annual application process and a bad capital improvement. That okay. is the business for water. Right? So if the plan is yeah. okay, maybe it's not water, the state water is yeah. And then you stated that the, 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 the member of the plan understanding yep. for your involvement or the county's involvement, then what happens when something is a someone still has to have control? Is that who has the control or do you have the control? Does county have the control? That's what I'm saying. The MO will do with time that part, and that can vary. And I'm trying to keep it from an administration standpoint. I'm trying to keep it. Maybe it's compliance, yeah. state or something. Yeah, yeah. That, that group would be the one. They're going to apply for it. They form as a, as a nonprofit. It's going to be on them probably, but I want to make sure that it is on them because of that, but also they're not following through on the commitments because I don't want to be, I don't want to be babysitting, but I don't want to be. Well, that's what I'm asking. That's basically I hear what you're saying too. Yeah. That's a good point. So the MOU is that's developed and we're going to make sure that that liability goes back to the MOU. And we're just, if we even do it, strictly in charge of the district budget and a partner in helping. That would all have to be spelled out. And yeah. There's a template. Mm -hmm. I haven't looked that closely at it, but it's a very important part of this thing. The right thing to cover that for sure. Because even, you know, as I look at that group, that there's two different family units that two different people on, which is great. But I can see conflict even within the family. Well. You know, yeah. it, you know it, it's going to happen. In the county, you have someone of authority that can. It's just structure. So I couldn't agree more. It's a well, we're not reading with the other. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm being very cautious on jumping with both feet on this. I, I want to see that I won't do it, and obviously it's going to take a few by this committee, but I don't want to overcommit. I want to make sure it's not fully present on this thing. We'll leave it on this for sure. We'll go forward if it is multiple county for this specific group that we put in all of the county street. And you're taking the lead on this? You're the yes. Okay. So the, the first year they may not apply for 40,000, right? Just yeah. small and all no, start off slow to get the group on it. We need help funding to do okay. Yeah. That type of thing. But um, I think we'd be looking at the end of summer to know where we're going. I think the deadline's in uh, September. 
September. Yeah. It just seems like it, I'm not sure. Did you interrupt you? Yes. Yeah. I could. I've been going. I thought I saw you. Yeah. But even the record for it from NRCS to, to the county to any project, I know that's what they submit. But some of them still have to follow through. Well, so, I'm guessing practices they do, but that's going to meet the NRCS standards. The because people have to lose observation. It just seems like it, you're, you're taking it. Your memorandum of understanding will have to be pretty tight. Right. Yeah, we'll see the installation is kind of what they're looking for. Because what I always hear, they're all spread too thin already. Yes, that's why I'm going very <laughs> cautiously because right. I do not want this to be a big boy. I see it as a nice fit for it to complement again the work we do, but I don't need more of a workflow with everything that's going on in the department. And that's why I'm it's almost certainly from an education side. I see this but, a lot more as education. Uh, implementation of the practice to uh, touch your area. Is this a national thing? Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's national. Wisconsin is the most popular right now. Other states are starting it because they see how much of a benefit it has been in Wisconsin. But the is majority of them are. Maybe just... What's that? Is there another area that is doing this or a group that you don't have to reinvent the wheel? We're talking oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, that's been in practice. They have the MOE done, mm -hmm. yep, for a model, that kind of thing. Yep, I and have working with contacted land water departments throughout the state. Yeah, yep. and I don't see Greaser Lead as a program that's going to fund a bunch of conservation practices for the department to get a bunch of people. It's going to identify that, right? What's that? It's going to identify the practice, it'll identify some of the innovative ideas they have. But it's more educational at the end of the day. And I have not seen any hard structures going in with these incentive um, funds that they are getting. I've only seen like soft structure practices. So they'll give you $25 an acre for doing cover crops, and things like that. So you're not going to be funding any $75,000 project at all. Yes. Um, are you going to be at the meetings they have? Yep, yep, I have attended both the meetings that they have already put on. And are all the members within the Rat River watershed? Um, the majority right now are from the Rat River. Um, there are three or four that are outside of that, but still in that Huck 10 watershed right now. So they can work with any landlords, producers within those yep. watersheds? On yes. There. What I find really encouraging is we're focusing on the highest three stories of watershed right now, and that's where Ellen's mm -hmm. focus is. We have a grant as well, which is right now a hundred thousand dollar grant, a smaller one. But what's exciting is to see these producers starting to get excited about the conservation and want to do this. And that's a lot of the outreach that we started is starting to snowball and, and built off of that. And that's what we want to do mm -hmm. from the whole conference. I would think that they would, you know, be promoting the practices and also learn about all the other funding that's available to them to implement these things and not depend on the farmer led group to fund it all or provide mm -hmm. effective yeah, assistance or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It'll be just a way to communicate. Exactly. Again, educational, they're, they're learning from each other and the other programs are all going to be from the masses. But just as a farmer, what, what what puts any fuel behind it if there's not a benefit? I know it's good to do the practices. They have a stewardship responsibility, but if there's not some financial reward or even taking care of it, right, right. A lot of these farmers are just getting knowledge from each other, from just bouncing off ideas. Because Jim, he's not in it for the money. Obviously, not all farmers are going to be like him, but he has taught our other farmers that have kind of been nervous about the grants that they're a part of right now. Um, and he's just taught them about what cover crop mix is. So it's a lot of benefit and knowledge for the farmers. And I have seen a lot of farmers working together um, just to come together in different practices and trying. You do this field strip and I'll do this one. I'm not and just testing out things. I think, again, I think it is good to do that. Yeah. I think there's a lot of, a lot of uh, in, in our lifetime, we wouldn't have been around in the farming area. You know, there's, there's, sometimes it's, just a fast 
for the player. Okay. Yeah. You need sustainability. Mm -hmm. All these methods. And the idea behind it is hopefully they learn things and they make the shift and manage it and stop relying on the games coming in. You know, they see the value of from an economic standpoint from a farming standpoint. You do these different practices and then you can get the added benefit of the conservation side of it. Buy that management chain and not have to be paying for it. Are you responsible for some kind of reporting in the end? Yeah, there is an outlined report that they do have to fill out annually. Very good. If there's no other questions, thank you for your. Yeah, thank you guys. Appreciate it. Uh, we are now on business item B. Review and approve the NR 151 ATC 250 implementation compliance notification letter. And that is this time. Yep. So we have one, one for approval for the letter for compliance with the agricultural performance standards. Um, this is a project we did south of Oshkosh, and it was a large wetland restoration that we did, and we have new refunds for it. Um, there's multiple partners in this in this project. They're actually putting in 2,500 plant loads, I think, starting today, and the weekend on this site. Um, this is been going on with, uh, I'm sorry, what? 2,500 what? Plant loads, wetland plants. <laughs> okay. So they, it wasn't part of our cost sharing, he did it on his own. So they're putting in all these data plans around this restoration. There was a, a burn that was put up in an existing crop field and backed up. Uh, I wish there's bugs instead of buds. So I'm wondering why we're doing all these bugs out there. So, yeah. <laughs> so this is the one that has the bull to on the, to identify this site. This a year ago, there was one element in that area that had a bull to on the Extension wall or no, wall in that black wall. No, yeah. that, that wouldn't be that one. No, this would be a brand new project. Um, I'm trying to think of his name, he owns, he's a billionaire that owns a bunch of properties. Oh, yeah, yeah, they yeah. have to call his name. It's called this campground, uh, is the area. So they want to use a lot more that actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he's going to use this, it's going to be a huge sign put up, it will be acknowledged. On it, and the goal is to have it for like ESPN events for dog like uh, waterfall shows and stuff like that at the end of the day, but very educational trails. Uh, so we'll get a lot of publicity with this with our department, what we do in the value of the weapon restoration. Um, so, really cool project. It, it, it was a lot of work kind of partnering with um, the Wisconsin Weapon Association was involved, Fox Wolf, and our department. So, you don't have a map about 30 acres, right? Uh, the overall site is probably right around that. It's all permanent to see down. Yep. Um, we don't have a map. I don't know if we can bring up a, a GIS map. Is that possible? Mm -hmm. Would you like a map of? Um, the next person will be back there. Where do you guys do? We want to just go on our internet? I do not. I think I saw the call for it. I don't know. Yeah, I don't bring up parcel numbers. Thank you. 
Okay, so here's the site here. Um, you can see the proximity to Lake Winnebago, how close it is, but where and where that parcel, there's a there's a draw going through there where there's a, a waterway. So there, I think there's a hundred and some acres that drain through that. So that area we have a herb now, and I don't have a pointer, but it's very well. That helps us. Okay, much better. All right, so here's the drainage here. Yeah. We put a berm right along here. We're backing all this water up in here. Oh, so you're creating a wetland. You created a wetland, yeah. On a not current wetland. Yeah, parcel. it was all crop field. This is now a wetland and everything else is seeded down. We did some enhancements in here to this wooded wetland. That wasn't a part of us. We felt cost share a little bit here. And then that water comes down right into Winnebago here. So we're stopping that water, slowing it down, and releasing it beyond that. So this would be the whole site. That would be the area with boardwalks coming all the way through with the wetland and education. Do you have an with the overflow? I'm sorry, what? Do you have your overhead set with the overflow set so you don't impede water back on the yeah. parcel back? We always look at that. We look at the neighboring property. So that's where we set our spillway elevation to make sure we have some free board in there that we're not flooding the neighbor. Yeah, yep. very important part of design. Yeah. So you're not creating the wetland, but you're addressing flooding issues. You're getting flood storage, flood storage, water quality benefits as the sediment settles out, and then the habitat for wildlife is phenomenal on this site. So really cool project. Um, yeah, it's going to get a lot of a lot of attention with this one. So oh, this is all private. It's not open to the public. I think I so much private. It's private property, but I. Don't know if he's going to have a community component. There might be trails that he might allow. I don't know for sure, but I know at least that where the berm is, there's going to be a big sign there talking about it with boardwalks. So I, I think it might be open to the public. There's a campground right here, right next to it that they have. So that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, so, so what? Motion to approve the notification of compliance letter. Motion. So moved. Second. Motion and second place. <laughs> to approve uh, the NR 151 ATC 250 of compliance letter specifically to the one that Team SNW LLC. All in favor of the motion say aye. aye. Opposition hearing none. Motion carried unanimously. C, update from Glacier Land Resource Conservation and Development Center. I believe that was me, and that's Olivia. Yes, hello. Good morning. Hi, everybody. Nice to meet you. Um, this is my first time here. So, obviously, um, my name is Olivia Hoffman. I work with Glacier Land RCMP, so we're one of four uh, RCMP nonprofits in the state. Um, we typically assist NRCS offices with their work loads and such. Um, so I work with Lynn and Appleton, but I primarily service the entire Northeast area. Um, so that's kind of why I'm here. We have a couple other projects that we're going to be working on in the county of Winnebago. Um, so I have some slides here. Lots of fun. Um, but I guess I'll start with the first project, which is our newest project. Um, it is a regenerative egg uh, project through a solo grazing grant. Um, so we have hired um, a new resource conservationist to kind of assist with grazing technical assistance 
um, you know, go out to landowners' properties, um, examine the resources, and give um, some advice for grazing and kind of go from there as far as programs and, and that sort of thing. Um, we did hire a regenerative egg specialist for this position. Um, her name is Elsie Walsh, and she does cover the green So if you hear her name, see her around, um, she's kind of helping out with the grazing stuff. Um, and then we also have a couple other grazing specialists kind of in the southeast part of the state that are also doing that technical assistance. So if anybody that's interested or uh, that sort of thing, grab a flyer, reach out to me. Um, and then another project that's kind of coming to this area is the Invasive Greg Mighty's Control Project. So this is a project that uh, has started a couple years ago. Um, we started on the east side of the state, along with Fishfield and the block County counties. Um, so to begin the project, we started mapping Greg Mighty's on different you know, private, public land, um, right of ways, those sorts of things. And then once we have those areas mapped, we um, request grant funding to treat those areas. Um, that's a partnership with a couple of their nonprofits and Stanbeck. Um, so that'll be coming to the area in fiscal year 24, so it's in fall. Um, and landowners can kind of um, either sign up on our website to kind of have somebody come out and map the grade ladies, or um, if we see it along the roadway and it's on private land, it'll get mapped and then that land will be able to receive a letter and then request information for us to come in and um, control that right now for free. So um, that's all grant funded as well. Um, I have opportunities to give you a bunch of water and let me know. But yeah, that's it for me. Just to keep going. <clears throat> Olivia, sure. I didn't catch what area does your group work? I don't know where your group works. Yeah, I'll pull and hand these out. So um, we work on the eastern part of the state, so all the way up to Door County, and then uh, we do cover Winnebago, and then down south in the southeastern part of the state. Thank you. No problem. Does everybody know what Greg Mighty's looks like? Are you familiar with it? There's a picture of her. It's that tall grass. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Is this a the like eight feet tall? Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. So you see it in the ditches along the roadway. It's all the time. And I see it in the middle of my wood lot. Yeah. So, so we're coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, that kind of control is starting in this area is this calendar year. So, you know, uh, it does have a website on the flyer. Does it get taller? Or is this the state line? Oh, I don't know. So, other questions? Start a little path and all of a sudden. Yeah, that's it. So it's bad because it is. Well, yeah, but it gets rid of me. Julie, we'll keep a couple of handouts for you. Thank you. Yeah. It's a plant you got to take a look at. It prefers a variety of environments and actually kind of likes saline environments. So the salt along the roadways. No, they were okay. So the wetlands are especially major. So if you have like wet areas when it's starting, then it's going to be Any other questions or? Yes, is there any other questions for Olivia? Thank you for your presentation and making us aware of uh, this new weed problem. We <laughs> Thank you. Well, new to me, I guess.
Uh, okay, that uh, certainly was an update. The next thing on the agenda is we're going to get it uh, real meat of today's meeting. That is review and approve the contents of the Land Water Conservation Department Spirit Fund Policy Plan. Uh, this is the beginning of multiple meetings in regard to setting up this plan. If you want to use that term. Now, I did ask Chad to put together this document. Everybody see this? This is a reference. So, as we go through these practices, you have a reference to how frequent and often the practice is used and installed by the department. So, I'll give you a little historical data to help you with your decisions as we go through this. The first thing we have, of course, is the BMP uh, cover page, I would say, would that be correct? In that area. And that defines uh, the structural BMP eligibility that shall be required and implemented by the department. Now, anything, even on this front page, that you have concerns about, they can always be, this is the draft. So amended or changed. So we're going to start by attachment one. I would have to talk to you back on how to start the first page. Okay, well, all right. I was thinking we'd come back to it if we need to, but is there any questions on the first page? So the first page is kind of setting the guidelines for all the practices that are eligible. And then <laughs> if they're not following the guidelines, I put in attachments for how it differs from the initial proposal. So how it's written for structural BMPs in this department is the eligibility would be determined by our department and we would provide a 90% cost share for all the practices. We'd have a cap of $50,000 for those practices, but that can be exceeded with committee approval. Um, so I can pick that number. That can be talked about, but I wanted to start out with 50,000. But there are going to be a lot of practices like break walls, for example, that are much more than that. So I just wanted to have that ability to bring the committee to increase that if we needed to, but I didn't want to leave it wide open. For example, if I get the Hoyt Sources Club comes to me for the next phase of the break wall at $10 million, and they want to get 90% cost share, obviously, we don't have that much money. And I wanted to at least have a cap so we could discuss it as, as um, we need to be maintained for 10 years. And then the last bullet point on here is these guidelines are to be followed unless otherwise stipulated in table one below. And that's where we get into the other attachments where it, it goes in a different direction to some of the other practices. So does that first part make sense? It's, there's a lot of practices under what's called ad cap 50, those are the ad cap where it identifies all the different BMPs. And instead of identifying every single practice, I wanted to capture it all in this with the 90% of the $50,000 cap, and then just identify those practices that are different. Can we just dovetail other programs? They may have something in our or a grant? It, yes, it could. So. I would still shoot for a 90%. I wouldn't be double dipping. We would not do that. If we're, for example, if we're going to pay 90% for a waterway and then they're going to use these quick funds, we're not cautious. But you just put 90%, and again, depending on what it was, you may change that maximum delivery. Right. So if, if they have a program and they sign something up and we're not hitting that 90%, we could sign an agreement to, let's say they were coming in 70, we could do a 20% agreement. The software. The software. Yes. Yeah. Um, so does that make sense? I don't know the cap that I picked, but 50,000 is the right number, but I thought that's a good starting point, but I I just want to have that flexibility to bring it to you because I, I have one we'll talk about later. That's a break wall. It's a 600000 plus dollar project that I want to use some of these spirit funds. And I need more than 50. Maybe not the whole 90%. I might leverage all the money, but I just wanted that ability to make. So if you want to leave it at 50 or increase it, 
Well, uh, to start out, let's uh, assure everyone we can come back to this and amend it after we can. What's, what's like the what's a federal number that can be a lot of curve? They have it's different rates for practice, so it's a little hard to say. And they can probably speak to that more. Is that well? But I thought it was a specific number for entity that they have. Be, yeah, they'll pay a certain rate in more. Yeah, I think it's based on being it's like a certain number. Yeah, that sort of thing. Can, can this go to foreign things? Or I mean, there's so many guidelines that, like the NRCS, I just use an example that they tie it into where it can go. Um, this, again, I, I think it's good, but I, I don't know if it's tight enough. Well, it's tied to these practices. Uh, it's not, it's not as so much of a practice as just a regulatory. So, do you think, think when Gary Bruce, should I refer to state ad cap 50? I don't know. That's, 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 that's what we do. I think you need it for a reference to something. Otherwise, someone's going to challenge it at some point. You just pop up. Sure. I think it's one of the things you I can I can put in here refer to ad cap 50 because you need some accountability. I, I wonder if that would be. Mm -hmm. it it, what it does is give you something, it gives you support. Putting for conflict at a later date. Yeah, I had it more vague that eligibility would be determined by us, yeah. and that's how we determine eligibility. But then, so, our, but if you just tie it to that, then it, it seals that. Yeah. So we always have to be under. The only thing we do is add that to the change. Well, we have yeah. some latitude. Yeah, so we use that service provider. And then again, it's just in the when, when there's a book, when there's a problem, it's always when the problem comes. The thing is, some of these are well. We, the other ones aren't like that. These are all side, but once it's table one side, right. I don't know if we want to restrict ourselves to what that cap does, or can we keep it? I, I wouldn't think so. We have practices established that we support in this county. Well, at some point, it just to that will eliminate those practices. At some point, would there have to be legal that looks at whatever we determine here? Well, the eligibility is determined by this department. I don't think I'll be able to get into that. If we leave it more vague, that it's not even vague, we determine it and have our guidelines and our rules. Things change, you know, we go through the committee for approval. So, I the more we talk about it, I think it's probably a good idea. So, we'll have always factored in that that's yeah. always protected is not, I, I think it's written well, it's for the sake of the what if and then through the process. Yeah, yeah, and that falls back on the department. We make that call. If someone challenges it, we have the other guidelines all set with this document that we got for four eligibility. You know. With the support of the grants, the law, Chapter 92, is based on committee, committee structure. Always remember that. This is a very important committee. So the, the emphasis is on this committee and the disposition. So when the department gets into trouble, our job is to just back them up, right? And that's kind of how it works. So just like we do our county program now, we keep bringing the agreements to you for approval. Spirit Fund program is going to do the same thing. We're just going to be seeing a lot more cautious at this meeting. Yeah. In order to I think it makes me just a little more nervous is once it went to water the the United States and changed even some of our our drainage use and our things like you're talking about the coal. Well, right. I guess I'm assuming everything. Are we under federal regulation of waters of the United States? Not yet. Yeah. That's all I'm afraid. I'm afraid it's coming. Not that I'm aware of, right? It was proposed, but not that I'm aware of. That's what the latest. The only reason I ask is that there is a chain of command. Yeah. And again, everything that seems like you just always have to give me that whatever authority, but that, that's the main state. We have to give her that authority and that's that. Yep. Maybe, well, that's, that's, maybe that's what your first one says. It does, and it, it, everything we do, we get permits, whether it's Army Corps, DNI, we're making sure we're following whatever that is. That we're doing. So, yeah. If you feel comfortable at the final office, but yep. now is the time to ask questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now that's, that's, that's why we're here for sure. At our meeting on Tuesday, there was uh, a resolution brought before the board to say for buildings, can we can we expand the ability to 
uh, without coming to the board, expand the limit up to without coming to the board, which is going to take us time to get that resolution passed for you guys to say, yes, we can go ahead and spend this amount of money. Um, I, my, my question comes to, is any of this going to be time related? We're coming back to you, coming back to us, coming back to the board, yes. which potentially takes three, four months. So I'll have, as the overall policy plan, I, I, I can tell you right now, I'm gonna put a 15 year time frame. But what I'm going to do as we get rolling into the other components of this, is have a, it's gonna be a cap for some landowners for what they can sign up and then a cap each year. So if we can manage it and you kind of spread it out with like the soil health initiative, because we don't want to sign up all the acres under a few landowners. So we're we're gonna kind of have those guidelines of how much we're gonna sign up. Yeah, and, and what I don't want to do is end up having those requests denied because it has to come back to committee to go to the board to uh, it, sure. it just needs to be time efficient i guess is what i i would agree and once we get this policy approved i'm hoping that's it from the county board standpoint okay and then we can start implementing it i don't have to go to the board thank you Chuck. Besides yeah. rate walls, what could you, you said the number of 600,000 acres. If what other projects would, would exceed 50 that like you in just normal operation? Well, um, some large scale wetland restoration could. Um, the other one that could is we just met with a farmer and the farmer's in rough shape and they have goes everywhere. It's going to be over 50,000. So It'd be a circumstance like that where you would come to the committee and want to get signed up, or you sign up something in one given year, and then the next year you sign another contract. So, so is it 50000 per annual? Because you can hear you said it's a practice. It does. That's a good point. So, is it, I put it for practice so we have more flexibility, but um, that could be discussed again to get committee approval if the next year is the next year. So, something that just Put that underneath that for contract for annual. How would you look at it? Well, yeah, you're on a one, two, three, four, 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 right? Yeah, it was just, and then I think also we have to remember that the intent of when we first started in the, 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 the dangerous destruction has yeah. it, it's number one, it's just a blessing that we, we have a poor water quality and don't, don't stifle things, whatever that means, because it is, you know, it's above and beyond. And, and if we, what is our, what does this department on an annual basis know, take care of now in dollar amount? Is it 400000 500000 it, it varies a little bit based on grants, but on average, it's probably not that much. But again, we haven't been really doing outreach as we just started to do it.
Yeah, we could get to that point where we score. I don't know if we want to go that far with the amount of money. Let's start. That's when we have limited funds. We would actually collect the application. It's only happened a handful of times. But then we have the roof reductions, the phosphorus, the sediment. We're looking at big stains as well. I don't think as long as it's eligible, I think we should be moving forward. The conservation on the land. We're not going to pay for something if it's pretty sure yeah. Just to say, yeah. just a sake of implementation, for you to maybe tell someone, yes, we can do this or not, this year because of. I, I think uh, as we go through this process, uh, many of those issues I think should be at the discretion of the director of the department. If there's an issue that would come to this committee to evaluate it, so I, I think we're going to set up the policy, but I need to be able to do that. Because uh, they're day by day, right? So I think if you would, uh, I don't do you have a pencil with you or not? Uh, maybe uh, just pencil in on the third bullet point, uh, cautioning for each individual structural BMP will have a maximum cap of 50 grand. So I mean, for her annual. Well, I will go and just and well right now this is a draft. We're just so the idea needs to be put on keep it keep it in the middle and then we come back. We could keep it as is a cap per structural BMP in that contract. You could another year you could sign up another BMP. Yeah. So I think that leaves it open. We could be getting contracts signed if we have more problems. Yeah. Ways for it. I think I think look. Bruce is saying that that's 50 grand per individual per year. You can't sign up for four different practices and have 200 grand. Is that what you're saying? Well, I would say I'm just asking just a general question. I would get the voice of the one we bring in the committee then if it's four good practices. Now I bring it to you. Then you would bring it to the committee. That's your next bullet or a great one. Yeah. Yeah. So we have, let's say there's Done this before with the land or we have a great long process. We got grants, we got money from the county program. Five years later, we have another portion of their weapon from it. So we break the land. We did it again. So I saw this in practices and it takes more time. So I would be totally willing to see money from the same thing. Because this great wall project's the old one. So it's important to that either. Uh, is everybody comfortable with the discussion and just for now penciling in uh, that additional point uh, on that would be bullet point three, page one? We'll come back to it. No. Uh, so the first page then is certainly drafted for discussion. As we go forward, now you take a look at attachment one. I, I expect we need to go through this and approve or disapprove the addition of it, increasing this practice to 90%. That's what we're doing. It's currently going to 70, then we go to 90 with this new program. Is there anybody that has a concern with that attachment one? So it's a 90% cost here, and we had a cap of 500 and it's now 1,000 per year. So that would be the change from where we're at. We bump it up to 90% from the cap. Is that just spirit fund money or is that spirit fund money and the county money and any other? I am. Um, this is, I'm not touching the county program policy. This is the spirit fund program. This is how I would manage it in the department is to so use both funds to get that 90%. I can't look at the county program contract, but I'm going to work to get everything that we have here. That's the end of the day, we're going to shoot these packages, whatever we have. I think the focus is you guys the 70 and supplement to the night, right? So, so, so you're using spirit fund money. That was a supplement. So that drags it out over 10, 15 year time frame that the exact fund. Okay. Okay. So, that's a thousand per year. For this practice. This, yeah. this would be um it's per one, individual. one in one individual, one range guard. Oh, this is written. I'm not going to keep doing rain gardens for the same person. It's but I thought you said per year, and 
that would be for the overall all the other practices and now we're getting into where it's it, it varies from the other approval for all the other the umbrella all the other one person can only get up to a thousand dollars for this rain garden practice right I, somewhere i heard per year and it's like if we're getting 10 grand for a rain garden <laughs> we plant one so this would be how we do it now is you, you give us receipts Back the time you dig the hole, you put the native plants in, get the water there. We get those receipts and we pay right now it's 70%. We pay it. This would be 90% of those costs. It's one time. They don't just get a payment every year. Yeah. It would be just for the installation of it. What did you clarify? Yep. Yep. I have one thought, and that is if someone is wanting to put a rain garden, um, it, it seems like maybe their portion of it might be a little bit higher so that they are um, seriously wanting, not just expecting it to, oh, you know what? I get to pay $100 and they get to pay $900. Okay. You suggest to go lower with the cost share? Right? I, yeah. And so maybe, maybe going halfway between and saying, hey, instead of $100, let's let you as a, as a homeowner, Pay two hundred dollars and we'll do eight hundred dollars. So uh, you're, you're looking at eighty percent cost share. Right? Correct. I, I, I'm coming in the middle of this. I wouldn't change it. I wouldn't change it. That just means what if you have a certain set of the ways. Well, let's go back to this document because, like I said, I look under rain gardens. In 2018, we put in three of them. 2019 was two. 2020 zero. 21, we did two. 22, zero. So it is a uh, not real popular practice, right? I mean, I, it's part of it might be an awareness thing. It's definitely that. We haven't done a lot of outreach with. You could know. say that, well, cost sharing was an issue. I couldn't afford to pay the, the 30%. Uh, homeowners cost share uh 90 will enhance it obviously uh you're suggesting it's too much of an enhancement yes can i chime in you may certainly may julie well i think having it up to 90 percent actually encourages people who are maybe on the fence to go ahead with it i think it's it's an incentive to increase our reach as opposed to like being miserly with the funds that we have. Any other opinion? Do you want to bring that forward as a motion to amend? Yes, I would. Okay. We have a motion on the floor to amend the rain garden cost share from 90% to 80%. Is there a second to the motion? Your second for the motion. Hearing none, the motion failed. Okay. Any other discussion or comments on Rain Garden? We're going to vote to approve or disapprove. Again, yeah, yeah, each yeah. one of these is not agree with the Rain Garden. Is what they did out here. You got to remember what it's doing. Um, I'm it's not just the floor. We actually have one or two of them. I think it's a good thing. Yeah, collectively, if we can get more of these in, it's, it's going to help with flooding issues, water quality. It's a little habitat in an urban environment. So it's a nice practice. Can, can this is, can um, contractors, can subdivision people, can who's limited by, is anybody limited by any of this? It would be by landowner. So contractor comes in he's working with a landowner like in a subdivision you could you could is it would fit this practice for a, a, a rain garden yep a subdivision person could come in and ask for this it would have to be the landowner that's a land contract yeah so the contractor can mention it to the landowner but they do have to work but the subdivision itself at some point you can purchase people that well the subdivision as well they create lots when the lots are sold you have a land yep that landowner could apply. You're saying the subdivision as it's being developed, so you want to put that subdivision complete. If it's one order, it's one right now. 
Now, the 70% funding for this practice currently comes from county money, correct? Right. Okay. And I should mention we partnered with the Oshkosh Southwest School of Review. So we had a $500 cap. They covered 250 of it. And we keep it. That's how the money came from. I think that partnership is still active. I would have to double check with them to the scare, but we could still partner with them. As I read this, I don't see any distinction between um, Bruce, you bring up a lot of those points. You get my mind open. So thank you very much for that. Uh, I don't, it says Rain Garden site eligibility. The second bullet, bullet point is the SFP will provide up to 90% of the initial cost. How are you going to address that if they come in and say, well, let's say we're out of county money, but we're going to cover the spiritual money, period, the whole cost. Not following this That's the question. Well, the second bullet point indicates to me, and I could be reading it incorrectly, that the spirit fund will cover the entire 90% of the cost. Yes. Of a cost share <coughs> up to 90 percent, yeah. So, but you're not mentioning the 70 percent that's coming from the county. I am not looking at it. I'm looking, this is a separate program. I'm not identifying the county program anywhere in the spirit, that's internal. But so, you are applying county money first and then supplementing with well, that's the priority of this committee. It's a, it's a question do we want to allocate the funds from our county program first? And then this is our fallback money. Well, well supplement. Some supplement money. Yeah. But if we start taking all of the funding from the spirit fund, I need to look at this legacy issue. I need to look at pulling this money out 10 to 15 years, which was, I think, even in the resolution. I did that. So, what 15 years are you to do? Well, you're going to have a lot of practices. And that, that tenure is, is 300. So, being that 300, what you normally on an annual basis, what you take care of now. You talking about the interest? No. But we're saying that the allocated money divided it out over 10, 10 years. Oh, 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 now the year that's coming at 10 years into this program. Right now, when we asked earlier, if he's at three or four hundred thousand dollars, what we take care of now plus. So, in a sense, it's doubling his workload. But I think back to the question is I, I think you can use it as a regulatory if you want to spread it out over 10 years. You can either cap that number or you can try to spend, but then again, you can go back to that other statement of interest. <laughs> but I don't can, think they're going to get a second. But I doubt they're going to. If you wait, you can do it, Chad. Yeah. Get back to his question. If it is 300,000 or 200, whatever that number is, this is sort of our target that we're going to try to pull on. That we spread this. But I think that will go back to page one, not the, the main target. Yeah. And it's, again, I, in my mind, I'm thinking the county program is going to be the first. Obviously, with the 70%, then it would be like a 20% contract. Yeah. That, that's my focus. So, yeah. But that's I think that's for my thing. But yeah. somehow, I know you said stated that, but it should be written down in some place. Yeah, that's the implementation again for understanding. Like I say, you got, uh, I assume everyone's mind thinking. Uh, and that's the point of what we're doing is to draw all these concerns and address them in the document. And I'll make more of that. Um, but as you, but that was your first page this, for yeah. this is not going to be on my first page. This is the structural yes. point, so that was the other thing to add. But the on the on the to first page, the first page, I yeah. lay out the whole program. So, okay. Are there any other comments before I ask for a motion to approve attachment number one? Any other discussion points? Well, the approval is subject to change. Uh, yeah, I think we're going to be able to come back. Uh, how do you want to handle that, Chad? Because normally when you approve something, if you want to change your approval, you have to 
sure a month after. So would it be easier just to go through and make one approval the whole thing? Or do you want to use well I, I think uh, Bruce was indicating that if we approve cash flow, uh, can we come back at a later date if somebody thinks of something else and come back on that? I think uh, it would be best for us. We've got a lot of projects to go through. Like I said, it's going to take several months. At the end, if somebody's got an issue with one of the attachments that we approve, we should have the ability to come back and address that again. Is my Would that be okay? Yeah. So for you thinking we're going to approve each component and then at the end the whole policy plan gets approved and that would be an opportunity to correct it. You agree? Yeah. If it is one more through something else might you know after trigger our mind or these conversations and then but then it's many things where we've approved things and it's at how it comes back. Level, yeah, right? you can't do anything about it ever. Yeah, so you can't do it. Okay, so I'm not going to use the word tentative. I'm going to say we're approving it as of this time. You will have a chance to review and amend the policy statement, and this will be part of it uh, when we're done before it goes to county board. Everybody in agreement? Do it. Okay with that? Okay, so I'm looking for a motion to approve attachment one. Motion and a second. Further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, hearing none, motion carries. Attachment number two deals with shoreland habitat for developed areas. So this is currently approved under our county program. Um, we have a 70% cost share with a cap of uh, 6,000 total costs. And what we'd be looking to only change on this program is to bump it up to a 90% cost share. So an example with that would be um, $6,000 project would be $5,400. That would be the max, $6,000, because these projects can get fairly expensive um, with plant plugs. So we wanted to keep that cap um, with this program as well, but then bump it up to that 90% cost share. Correct. If I'm wrong, Chad, but I just think that this is where we probably get our biggest bang for a buck. Uh, Long Six thousand for a project is not that much, and what those, what that shoreline habitat restoration does is is extremely beneficial. I. I just I have no problem with this at all. I think the more we can encourage that, the better it is for everybody. Yes, and again, this can be exceeded if we have a project that justifies it. I can bring it to the committee to talk about. And then keep in mind these practices, it's recorded on the deed, and I've had it happen multiple times where that property changes ownership. They want to take the bumper out, and they have two options. They pay us back, or they have to redo it. Gotcha. So uh, there's some teeth in it, which is yep. good. So as I'm here, what's being discussed is this is going to be really flexible. Yeah, um, as far as exceed to exceed the cap, some of them. Yeah, the rain garden, I'm not because that's okay. I don't want to do that. It's, there's some room where this there could present opportunities or project might come forward where I want that flexibility. Yeah, for yep. exceed it. I would make the motion to approve the cap two. Okay, we have a motion. Second. Second. Further discussion. Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Opposed, no opposition, the motion carries. Attachment three, this deals with well abandonment, which is a very popular practice. I would make the motion to approve attachment three. Chad, what are the differences here? Uh, let's go for that. Hold your motion if you would. Sure. Explanation. So the differences in this is a high priority well was at 70%. We would do a 90% cost share, no cap on the well. And then for low priority, which is the majority of our wells, we would um, keep it at 50% and would raise it to 70, but then bump the cap up to um, $1,000. It's at Five hundred or eighty. So the cap would go up, but still fifty percent for those whole priorities. Which is uh, 
the last paragraph on the page. Right? Where we do about time and What could you say, Barry? Could you just eliminate the high and low and just state that 90% to the maximum of 1,000 or not? I don't want to do 90% low priority. A lot of them are, I feel like, in the top of a goal mod, it has to ring a bell, consider it a low priority. I won't be able to answer this personally. I would like $540 well. A lot of them are coming in for just under 2,000 for the sawhouse. So I would keep it consistent with um, close to what we had with the 50% of the Lexington County program. Yep. And I like the high rate of it. Yes. Very good. Given that explanation, is the motion still correct? Pending? Okay, I have a motion to have a second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, no opposition, attachment three. Is supported. Attachment four. This deals with wetland scrapes. So the reason we with in our county program right now we have this separated out because a wetland scrape um, it can be expensive and it's not your biggest bang for your buck when it comes to wetland restorations. Um, so we had a fifty percent cost share. <coughs> so we'd be just looking to bump that up to seventy percent in spirit funds to be a twenty percent. Can I, can I just make a comment on what you said there? I think a wetland scrape in a runoff area, they're basically retention basin to settle it. So depending on how they're located or designed, I think they, they're, they are benefit. They're beneficial. Yes. But if you plug a ditch, put a berm up, break a tile, it's a lot more cost effective. I understand that. So that's why we kind of differentiate. We get a lot of interest in scrapes. So we have to allow that money to go further. And that's why we have it. The billionaire would, but the normal farmer may not. Sure. Yes. So then maybe uh, but just a point of yeah. so, so your point, should we add the language that the committee can uh, provide more funding? You want to see 70%. Not only with the committee approved. Satisfy your concern. Well, it's just a point of I think again that if it wasn't for the reason of this money to do water enhancement, the more you can we've said this all the way along, the more we can get out there to the people, uh, we should try to stifle something that especially with these dollars. These are just pension dollars, so they're yeah, I mean the cost has been coming in really high for estimation, so we're just looking at the money out further and then going up to 70 percent is to me is to make another but the policy thing oh well that would just make a quick bit that way with especially in this program because um, again with some of the county we can in the middle you ground we can make like full 20 percent to get us there so the middle ground there we can exceed 70 percent with the committee approved that's that that's language that's in some of these pages, but not all. I think that I, I would just put it at night. I've said this all the way along. I would keep it at 90, just consistently across with this program. Yes. Yeah, this, we're this, only talking about is this is an oversight. Again, Chad, correct me if I'm wrong, that the county money's come in and this is above and beyond what the correct. Right. Up to 90%. Yeah, the reason, the reason we have it is great to the county program because it is not eligible for GAC GAP funds because the reason I said we don't see it to the higher priority. The other weapon restoration dollars, but, but we saw some value there, and that's why we did it. But again, so I think maybe that's what you just said. Farmers aren't as willing to give up, but they're willing to enhance. And I've stated that all the way long. I've done several, you know, I, I, I think we're beneficial. Yes, that would be so. Yeah, but my argument would be is paying for your bunk. And straights are not the biggest thing for your bunk. They're just they're right. Just, that's that's fine. But I think for consistency, I'd leave it at that. Yeah. Yes, sir. I, I would be opposed to not listening to our director's recommendation that 70 is just going to take a long time. If you know it's how to try to stretch the dollars, I think if 
they are willing to pay 30 percent then they don't want to scrape all that bad or it is but, but again i think this, so, the, the argument no but this, this money is a separate just animal came we're going to answer six hundred thousand dollars if you start this the program to keep in mind i know it's a lot of money but when you get those other programs approved it's going to be a lot of money going out for soil health and then this other program that does like a ten or fifteen year agreement, and that is going to be the capital funds right there. So, um, just looking long term, but it's it's the money all as much as we can to get some conversation in the county. Again, we should have a maximum that we go up on an annual basis, but you want to spend, you may have to tell someone that. Have to get back into the thing in another year. Oh, it's fine. Uh, the small the card you could remove from Tracia tonight. I would, I would, would want, I would ask that we keep, I would ask that we keep consistent to get the uh, of that revenue to get it out. Or if you want to, you can move to uh, take the cash from four up later. Don't have to take any action at all. I would, I, I would, I'll read this with the information. That's what I, I'll okay. you want to do. His motion is to increase the cost share up to 90%. Uh, that is bullet point one, two, three, four. Is there a second to your Mr. Bowen's motion? Is there a second? Hearing none, I'll take a motion off the back of the second. Okay, we're back. We approve attachment four as written. Okay, I have a motion to approve attachment four as written. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposition. Remember, we can still come back and address this before the final policy is addressed. Attachment four is approved as written. Attachment five. This deals with livestock waste <coughs> storage facilities. Chad. So this um this is a little different than we've ever done in this department. We have not looked at storage as a high priority because we haven't had a lot of funding. Um, so we did not foster these types of practices in the past, but we do see value in it. Having storage, you can over time and spread that waste based on weather, based on time of year. So there definitely is a conservation benefit with storage. So we put some sideboards on it for eligibility. Um, one of the things we did is um, they can't have another livestock facility. So we're not going to pay to expand the facility or anything like that. Um, and it doesn't include reception tank. So if a farmer has a reception tank and then they want to put it in the pit, it would be eligible. They need to have an approved nutrient management plan. And then we did put some animal units attached with this. We said 140 animal units of dairy, which would be 100 dairy cows. And then we had equals chickens or pigs um, for the same animal units would be eligible. It needs to be at least 180 days of storage, six months storage. And we would do a 50% cost share with a cap of $25,000 for, for the storage. And then we need to follow the requirements of our ordinance and the nutrient management plan to keep the parameter. So it's a little bit of an incentive for farm farmer if they want to keep storage. I don't think we're going to get into a lot of these, but it's it's a, a nice component to provide a little bit of funding for a farmer to the storage. So yeah, it's a little different than what we've normally done, but we felt there was value in it. That's why we included it. Mm -hmm. In, in past, we've gone like on our tour, we've gone to site where they had situations and if they had money or not, money, they were, I think, always under 140 million. So, like, uh, how many places have you seen that this can be applied? There's some out there. Yeah, uh, we have we have one out in Pickett right now, he's looking at the storage in. There's uh, another one right outside of Oshkosh. Been bringing for any storage if you can reception tank right now. There's a need there. There's a need. It's not going to be a huge need, but I think, I think it's going to be considered. 
What about that person that has by what it's by by um, if they have the family unit and they have a situation that needs to be fixed? I know what you said it's not if it's existing, but if there's one that's failed, you're saying no, if, if, if the person has 140 animals and it's today they they need storage. No. Okay. No. So then if they had that many units in an existing site. And again, we, we had to put a cap on it because in order to get especially concrete, it would be crazy expensive. So we just want to have it. In this, do you have a do you have a situation where someone decided to close where the north bit to just bulldoze a bunch of dirt on it and didn't do anything properly? If we've got a little involvement in how it's created in the first place, does that ever make closing it up easier? Or or it's it's so much easier. If you have an approved design and we put it in for our department to have the as bills and 15 years later they want to abandon it, abandon it, it makes our world a hundred times easier. Like that one we had to go up and press digs, find out where the bottom of the pit was, get five trees and quick or get a little bit of funding and that one. Is moving forward in fall is the last I heard. Um, so it, it does make it easier. And abandonments would fall under the first stage. If you have a good abandonment, it's going to get a 90% cost share. Right. Yeah. A little different than your storage. But just for that state goes for that abandonment, that was one of our list of practices. Do we have more practices than the top ones? Well, I could list. 40 different practices, but they're all covered at 90% of $50,000 cap on that front page, other than the one you're talking about. Okay. Right. But cool. I think I would put one of that. We had a list generated at one time. I'm afraid that the tech that said there's new EMTs that pop up at times. So I guess we could if you want me to list every one in that cap 50. It's, it's, there's quite a few of them. Yeah, I, I don't know. Well, when we, when, we, when we put down our intent, there was there was more than however many pages are here. Oh yeah, that's why I said they want. Okay, you're gonna get a document like this. This is just long. Okay. This is just being this is just structural EMTs. Next month it's going to be the soil health program. Oh, and there's gonna be all these different components under that program. Except once to get those things done. And then the last program is gonna be I think we're gonna call it the team with the cover and then we're gonna have parts of the lumber, the wind breaks, the ditch. Not on the livestock waste storage facility. Okay. I just wanted to add that through our programs, there is considerable funding for manure storage. So Dan becomes aware of a producer that's interested in, in that practice or addressing farm or runoff issues. All of those things can be cost shared under other programs. So this isn't you know, the only funding that's available. And that would be the first funds, right? We have always forwarded your storage to your agency. Your report said it was. Yeah, yeah that would be fine. But that would always be the plan. So we're not having a conference, and I need to be very elderly to be aware of conference between the federal program. Well, there's going to be overlap with all of these. Uh, That's areas. something you're going to work out. Yeah, we're going to try to find the best deal for the farmer. And sometimes it's they want to work with Lynn or they want to work with us in relationships. And it's, that's it's going to come down to who's going to provide the more pressure. Well, it's that plus what you said stated earlier is it's it's from a, from from the county slash the county fed, yeah. and then. To get up to 90% on some of those 50, whatever we are. So, this example, how I would look at it is if it was $100,000 and they provide $70,000, then I would do a $20,000 increase. I would go above 
on this one we ought to have a, a bullet point that the landowner must be open to um, allowing access for others to view their demonstration project during that 10-year period don't you think that's a, good, that's a good idea yep i will add that the landowner will allow access for the public or inspection or i don't know I don't know the proper term, but <clears throat> for others to see their their innovation. And we do that for some of our other practices. So I can put on here that the landowner must allow access for public viewing. Uh, it be even add uh, with prior notice. I mean, yeah. you don't want to. Yeah. Him to have to let everybody go walking through his property, but if there's a, a school group or a um, elected official that want to see, or with with prior notice, he has to allow access. Good point, Doug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You can oversee. Land over mm -hmm. there, whatever. Right. Works with our department to schedule. There you go. And yeah, the right. park access. Yeah, covered the liability on that, but it's called a park to cap the liability. I think we have to make sure it's all the time. Does uh, that suggestion, uh, sir, you're up? Uh, she really can't do it. Uh, would somebody offer an amendment to this? Somebody point? else has to do it. <laughs> yeah. To support her point of view. I would move to do whatever Julie says. <laughs> That's why I'm more than on the table to approve the uh, comments uh, and amendments to attachment four or six. Two. Is there a second? Second. A second. Okay. Any further discussion on the amendment only? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Opposition? Okay. And one. No. Okay. Now we're back to, and thanks for your comments, Julie. We're back to approving attachment six as amended. So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Discussion. Additional discussion, I should say. Hearing none, all in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? That was yes. 
So I believe the eyes have it here. One, two, three, four, so on. Motion is approved. I think that's it. We had six. I, I hope uh, what we're doing today demonstrates the process we're going to use. And I also hope uh, it addresses the significance of what we're doing as we go forward. So over the next few months, it will be on the agenda uh, with a different group. Is that the right word? Of projects to approve. Yep. And my unit are all I think this was the easy one. The next two will be a little more involved. So, yeah, it would be uh, sections of the overall policy. So, okay. Okay, we have three sections. All right. Very good. We will move on to the agenda item here as soon as I find it. That's the question. You I most certainly can. On the front page. The overall arching, we didn't go on that for that part. We did for all the other attachments. We did, is, yeah. But I don't know if you want to go back and do that part of this overall program. Is that something you need? Uh, did all the attachments? Yes, as long as we're aware that this can still be amended, right? Because I, I really am sympathetic. What we would be approving then is the first cover page of the structural best management practice document. With the handwritten part? With the handwritten part. That's pretty weird. The cap for weird. Well, that would be an amendment to this. Okay, so we're back to the first page, the cover page. So I have a motion to amend bullet point. Are we doing three? Yes. What's your amendment? That we would put some verbiage in there of an annual or annual review. Okay, that verbiage would be cost year for each individual structural units due to have a maximum cap of sixty thousand dollars per annual review. And again, that would still put under the under the under the Under our review, it's the same one, the same people do it, they say it's going to be not. That would be your fifth bullet point, right? One, two, three, four bullet point. The maximum may be exceeded with the pre approval of the LCC. Okay, very good. So it's the only word you're adding in the annual. Okay. I have an amendment to the cover page proposed, a motion. Do I have a second? Could you read how it's supposed to? I didn't catch the wording. Okay, uh, this is the third bullet point cover page. It will read as the amendment is cost sharing for each individual structural BMP will have a maximum cap of $50,000 annually. Okay, thanks. Any further discussion on the amendment? Very none, all in favor say aye. Opposed? Nay. Pardon me? Both nays. Both nays. And we have three yeses, right? Yep. Approve, approve, approve. No, no. Okay. The motion carries on a vote of three to two. Now back to, uh, as Chad has requested, that we approve the uh, cover page of the Structural Best Management Practice Program. So I have a motion to approve as amended. So moved. Second, I have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Right. Right. Opposition, the motion carries. Once again, we can come back and revisit uh, if necessary. So, yep. in, in the revisiting, does that mean we're talking about three more of these that we will be doing? Would the would we have a fourth to consider all of them 
at the same time? My uh, perception is we're going to go through, did you say three more? There'll be, this is the first, there'll be two more, and then I'll package it all up. I'll put the cover page on of all the programs so that can be discussed. And then I'm envisioning it, that being the whole thing being approved or amended at that point. The whole thing, I think at that point, we can <clears> go back and, and I'll allow amendments or changes to the entire document. Got it. Thank you. If there are none of those, then we will be moving to approve the policy and submit it to the county board. As, as our committee goes through and there's changes on an annual basis? That's going to be in here somewhere. Chad and I discussed that. That's going to be in here someplace. It's just, We're going to add that. I think my point is, I don't want to move on to the go. Well, I'm a little skeptical of future committees, whether it be this committee or future committee, different terms, having the ability to come in and change things on a too frequent basis. This policy will hopefully will be enduring. Now, obviously, it could be amended, new practices added, that kind of thing. So we thought annually, I was thinking work. in order to the program, but then follow up. We that to go to the board. I gotta go. Bye. Take care, Julie. Uh, let, let's talk a little bit about going to the board. Uh, that's under discussion. My initial impression is yes, it has to go to the board. As I read chapter 92 and the county board rules, which I wrote along here somewhere in this file. Uh, you want me to read that to you? I can find it. Well, it basically, I think it's 22, what it's called. It basically states that this committee shall set policy and that the policy has to be approved by the uh, here I call it. The committee shall review policy issues relating to the Winnebago County Soil and Water Conservation Programs and advise and recommend appropriate policy goals and legislative action to be taken by the county board pursuant to, pursuant to chapter 92.06, 92.07. There's still some discussion going on about uh, how much authority the county board has over this committee because we are a statutory committee. So that's kind of ongoing. Right now, I'm suggesting, and my impression is that, and we did talk to Marianne for council, uh, that we need to have a group of council. If that's the case, we'll do that. Then the secondary question is, does changes to this policy, and then you get into minor changes, major changes, that kind of issue, I uh, need to go forward to the county board again, which can be a bureaucratic mess. I look at just the county program, you all develop the policy for that. That did not go to the county board, all the components within the county program that was approved through committee and we implemented it. So time. that's the state program. That goes that's the county program. I thought that county program. So, okay, not the one that went to the state. The storm money you're talking about? No, no, no I'm talking about the land water conservation uh, goes to the state agency. We've got to renew that every oh. five years. Yeah, that's our land and water plan. The plan. Okay, so the plan is state approved. We don't run that by the county either, do we? Yeah, that gets approved by the county board. Okay, okay. Yes. Yeah, so. and, and that goes back to my original question was the time frame that these things happen. Does it have to come back to us and then end up going to UW extension because I, I see that we're a part of them and then it goes to the county board and we're talking four or five months later, maybe you get approval. We're not at the board extension, but uh, we need to just sit down and talk with Mary and I. I think Chad and I need to have a further discussion along with the county board chairman uh, to kind of iron this out because the importance of this is. We want to implement policy, we want to implement the plan without a lot of bureaucratic. Um, exactly. 
I imagine this whole policy coming up sure, sure. board, and it's it's a lot for them to take out, take in. You know, the board has seen this whole packet, and I don't even know all that would go with their two board members going through all this. I, I totally yeah. understand. So it's an interpretation of the law and the rules. Uh, Absolutely. We'll keep you posted, but we do have several months to get worked out. Yeah. General folks, I need to. Oh, I apologize for keeping you too long, but uh, let's see what else we got here. No, agenda item E. Uh, yes, and we have uh, one, two, three, and one is huge. I'm in it. Would move take out uh, three costs or agreements. Okay, uh, do I have a second? I have a question. Well, we'll, we'll do oh, that. Okay. Second. Yes. Let's get it on the table. Okay, a motion and a second. Discussion. And I have the same question there, especially in regard to. Well, just to say, we're sure if we go back, and again, I don't want to be this one, but we go back to what we had seven years. Yep. And if you're a maximum of $1,000, I'm not sure. $6,000, $6,000, $6,000. Yeah. Okay. So, what was this? <coughs> Okay. The rain garden the show. No, no, no. <laughs> We're talking about the third bullet point for uh, Christine Buckstaff. Okay, that's a shrub. Hundred units. I'll pull that out. No, I was thinking that we're, we, this is an example of what we talked about on the two. Oh, okay. Yeah. And I, I had this paid before the thousand dollars on rain garden. Yeah, I'm good. Okay, we're good. You live, Chad? Yeah. <laughs> uh, can you give a little overview of the, <coughs> of the Buck Stack project? That is large. And I assume that's along Pine Road A. I, I am so it's a shoreline restoration, but it's just a little longer section. This is gone. So there's no recognizable. I was referring to number three. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that was the one. Okay. My question is satisfied. Any other discussion? Hearing none, I'll favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries unanimously. And let's see, we go to move to adjourn. We're not there yet. We got to review the project list. Any questions on the project list? We have four, three additional ones. So I'd like to point out my voice is coming back here. It's good. Um, two well abandonments and the Air Van Dyke site. That was a great fall on South Shore of Lake Lane County that was designed. To 2000. Um, it's changed ownership to Eric now, and he's very interested in doing great well. It's been in my radar for years to get that one done. It's almost 3,000 feet, about 600,000 plus. Um, so it's going to be a really nice project, and that's where we're going to go with the spirit funds. If we get a flat 90% cost share, obviously that's a lot of money. So I'm gonna have to think about leveraging maybe another grants or we just do it through the spirit fund program. I'm not sure yet how we're gonna do that, but this is definitely one that should be done because the site has been a lot of time so left. Where where the policy is that you know where Great Great's Road is? Sure. Right. Yep. So right where that point starts, okay, and just go right off that wetland. Breaks the only uh, carbon copy of the one that you put in on the yeah. east side. It'll be a larger break, double the size. Okay. Well, double. So just to if if it's where I think it is and where it should have been 30 years ago, mm -hmm. um, you can certainly make the argument that it's not just Eric Van Dyke that's going to benefit from this project, it's going to benefit the entire area in there and enhance all of those cane beds that have been in the 
beat up putting tag gets beat the heck every time the wind yeah. blows out of the I north saw it west. going over so, this week that wind was just hammered. Yeah, it just um we we finally got no weight buoys in Winnie County that they have an extra ring around them just so they stay upright because when the wind is blowing the current and so forth. So um yeah this would almost be like a uh, a bookend the way I envisioned it of the one that was constructed years ago. So yeah, just want to point out that it's we're not just enhancing Eric Van Dyke's you know, piece of property, it's the whole the he section owns, of it. He bought 80 acres, it's all underwater. I should say it's all underwater. Half of it is cattails, the rest is open water. Yep. So this break wall would fall along the outside of his 40s would so be half of the open water that would be established and then it would protect the rest of it from further erosion. Yep. So it was interesting. Breaks contacted me. They own a sliver to fall in front of the eight because they wanted to do a break wall, but it, it just didn't work with the land ownership. And he said it was for sale. And this heir bought it, who I know, and he stumbled in my office two weeks ago. I said hi to him and he just connected and the project was ready to move forward. So Obviously, a long ways to go with the funding and where we're going to go with that. I and mean, if it is 700000 at 90%, there would still be 70000 in his pocket. So we have to work through some of the details. And again, if I want to leverage other funding from other places, but I think at least a 50% would be the secure funds, but we have a little bit. So, uh, any other review or comments in regards to the uh, project list? Hearing none, I'll accept the motion to adjourn. So move. Motion and a second. All in favor say aye. Opposed, no opposition. Motion carries. Keep these documents in particular uh, this one, you know, the industry and the here from program first stop. Hang on to this. Very good. We are adjourned. Thank you.